Yo, what's up guys? You've got Lightning here and I'm coming at you today with something very special. Today I'm doing a video on Aurelia, the Will of the Blades. This guide is going to be updated for 2017 patch 7.11 after the mid-season including all of the new items that I'm uh, aware that Aurelia uses. Uh, this guide is going to cover everything from from items to runes, masteries, summoner spells, matchups and how to play Aurelia in general. So I hope you guys enjoy this. Uh, just please sit back and watch the video. I'm going to have uh, timestamps in the description so you can skip to any part that you want. And uh, I hope this helps. If you have any questions or if you've missed anything or you want me to add anything, just let me know. Alright, let's get into this. Abilities Aurelia's passive is called Ionian Fervor. Aurelia reduces the duration of crowd control against her based on if she is outnumbered or not. That is allied champions against enemy champions. If you have the numbers advantage, you, it grants zero crowd control reduction, so you don't even have a passive in that regard. And even fight, it grants 10% crowd control reduction, and if you're outnumbered, it grants 25, 30, 35, and 40% crowd control reduction based on how many enemy champions are around. Now, Ionian Fervor is a aura with a self-targeted buff component. It has 1000 range and when it's active your mantle of decorum on her on your back will glow brighter more enemy champions are in range and the status bar will display the Ionian Fervor buff. Now Ionian Fervor does not reduce the duration of displacements or suppression. That includes Yasuo's Tornado uh, and Malzahar ult, Warwick ult, Urgot ult, Tom Kench W and Skana ult. All of those abilities that were just stated, except the Yasuo Tornado, which is a knockup, are suppressions, which means that only QSS can reduce the crowd control of those abilities. Aurelia's Q is called Blade Surge. Aurelia dashes to the target enemy, dealing physical damage and applying on her effects. If Blade Surge kills its target, it refunds 35 mana and resets its cooldown. This is your bread and butter ability and is excellent for farming under tower while you're under pressure. Note that Blade Surge is a single targeted dash. It does apply on hit effects and lifesteal and it can't critically strike. However, it does proc a static shiv passive and Blade of the Rune King passive as an on hit effect. The damage is mitigated by Jax's Counter Strike, Pantheon's Aegis Protection, Fiora's Riposte and any blind. Spell shields also block the damage. Blade Surge will allow a rally to dash through walls only if there's enough space for her on the other side. Damage is not dealt to the target if Aurelia is disrupted before she reaches a location. The damage cannot be dodged via instant displacement, i.e. Fizz's Urchin Strike or any dash like Israel E or a Yasuo E. If the target dies within 0.5 seconds of performing Blade Surge, its cooldown will still refresh. Aurelia's W is called Heaton Style. Passive. Aurelia's basic attacks heal her for 5, 7, 9, 11 and 13 health per hit. And that is on hit. The active. Aurelia's basic attacks deal bonus true damage and double heat in styles at healing for 6 seconds. Bonus true damage is from 15, 30, 45, 60 and 75. Note that heat in style passive is an on hit effect. The active is a self targeted buff with an on hit effect component. Heat in styles true damage does not apply spell effects. The true damage ignores all form of damage reduction except in vulnerability i.e. Trindomir ult or Kale ult. Heat and Style does not have a cast time and does not interrupt Aurelia's movement. Its true damage does not affect structures, but the passive healing still does. So when you're attacking structures, uh, you still get the healing, just like Zin Zhao. The on-hit healing is not lost while Heat and Style is on cooldown. Aurelia's E is Equilibrium Strike. Aurelia pierces target enemy, dealing them magic damage and slowing them by 60% for a duration. If her percentile health is equal or less than her targets, she stuns them instead. This means if you're both 100% health and you're going for a trade, you will always get the stun. Note that Equilibrium Strike is a single targeted ability. It does apply spell effects as a single targeted ability. Spell Vamp is fully applied. Rylize will apply a 20% slow for one second. Not that you'll ever build that. The magic damage will be mitigated by magic shields like Morgana's Black Shield. Spell shields will block the damage and the slow and the stun. Aurelia's ultimate is called Transcendent Blades. Aurelia summons four spirit blades and fires one in a line towards the cursor, dealing physical damage to all enemies it passes through. Transcendent Blades can, can then be cast three more times at no additional cost to fire each one of Aurelia's remaining blades, incurring 
0.5 seconds delay in each cast. Each blade heals a rally for 25 of the damage it deals to enemy champions and 10% damage it deals to enemy minions and monsters. Transcendent Blades is a linear pass through skill shot. It does apply spell effects as an area of effect ability. Spell vamps reduced to one third effectiveness. Rally's Crystal Scepter will apply a 20% slow for one second, not that you'll ever use it. Spell Shields will block one blade's worth of damage. After that, they'll get take the damage like normal. The ability is considered to be a projectile for Brom's Unbreakable and Yasuo's Windwall. Uh, some extra information, once active, a rally has 10 seconds to use all four charges before it goes on cooldown, or it will immediately if all four blades have been used within that time frame. Each one accounts as a trigger for the purposes of spell blade, which is useful for your tr Trinity Force, and all activations of transcendent blades have no cast time and do not erupt a rally's movement. Skill order. So I generally have three different ways to skill my abilities. This first one here being an E start into a Q for your level 2 and then maxing W. This is generally for bruises and tanks as the W will increase the true damage and also give you that healing. Maxing E second is good for when you need to do as much damage as possible to get that stun off and then do your full combo as soon as possible to try and burst them down. This next page here is a Q start into a level 2 E and then going forward to max W and then Q second. This is the page that I only really use for Gangplank because I want to max my W first for the extra true damage and then max my Q because if I max my E, he's just going to use his orange and it's, it's like a free QSS. So that's why in this instance we max Q second just for the, to keep the pressure up with the Q, uh, W, Q combo and then into the E for the slow, get some auto attacks off and then back off when he uses his orange. This last page here is a Q start into a E level 2 and then into a W level 3 and then going on to max E. This is generally helpful if you're versing a squishy AP generally in the mid lane and starting level 1 Q is just so they, you can get the CS and they can't harass you as much and then going into the E to get that stun off as soon as possible to uh, ideally get a sheen and then uh, proc your sheen a couple of times with your E and W and then Q finally. Summoner Spells so this first option here, the obvious one, is Flash and Teleport. I'll take this 90% of the time. Teleport is just so valuable, especially when most other top laners these days are taking Teleport. And you don't really need anything else to sort of do well in the lane. You can't really get totally dominated in the lane if you don't take Ignite or something like that. So Teleport's most of the time is the best option. The second option is taking Ignite. When I take Ignite top, I'm generally versing a Swain or a Vladimir. I wouldn't really take Ignite in any other situation unless I was sure I was going to snowball. The third option, and very rarely I'll pick this, but Exhaust can be good into a bursty champion, sort of like a Riven or a uh, Gangplank. Gangplank after he uses his orange to get out of your E, and then you can exhaust him to stick with him with your Phage. Masteries. This page you're seeing on your screen now is generally the only page I ever take on Aurelia. I believe that Fervor is infinitely better than uh, Storm Raider Surge or Thunder Lords or anything like that. The only time I might switch this up is when I am in a hard matchup. I might take Feast in the Ferocity Tree and Veteran Scars and Fearless in the Resolve Tree. This is generally the only page you will ever need on Aurelia. Runes. This first page here is a standard ADC rune page. It has the attack speed, attack damage, armor, and magic assist, so it's good as an all-round page. But there are some specific matchups where a better rune page will result in an easier laning phase and could result in you snowballing the lane. This rune page here is specific to AD champions or bruisers like Darius or Fiora. First, you have a little bit of attack damage. You've got the army that you need and the attack speed and magic resist per level. Specifically, if you want to rush a ninja tabai and a Doran's uh, blade you'll find that you can win earlier trades at level 4 with this with this room page this is the room page that i take versing swain 100 percent of the time i like having the health per level and the straight up 20 percent attack speed and also the three percent lifesteal helps to out sustain him with his constant damage threat at level six i generally rush a wits end in this matchup because it does 40 bonus on hit magic damage and your basic attacks on hit grant five magic resist and reduce their magic resist by five for five seconds which stacks up to five times totaling 25 bonus magic resistance and taking away 25 magic resistance from them 
which makes your on hit damage from your wits end deal more damage and it also helps negate all of his damage so generally at level 6 with the life steal on this item you can out sustain him Merc Treads is a good buy too, just in case you get hit by his W and to negate the effect of his slow from his Q. This last rune page here is the rune page I generally take versus AP champions. It gives me the armor that I need for the creep negation, a little bit of attack damage, 15% attack speed, the health per level and the magic resist to, to help with their damage early. Generally if I want to snowball versus an AP champion I'll take this rune page. Item Builds starting items so for your starting items corrupting potion is going to be your best bet it's got good sustain with mana and health and also good trading and it's useful all the way throughout the game as the effect from the passive scales with your level door and shield is going to be your best bet versus t champions like timo or kennan just so that when they poke you down you can he keep your health full up to keep farming doran's blade is going to be a really good item versus an early uh, early melee matchup that you want to trade with, maybe like a Garen or something like that. Gives you the extra health and life still, and it's really good if you want to early trade or and get an early lead. Cloth armor and four potions, really good if you want to rush a ninja tabai. You can get cloth four and then use 800 gold to back and get a ninja tabai. If you have even more gold, you might want to consider getting a Doran's Blade for added pressure. I much prefer picking Cloth 4 as a starting item versus someone like Garen or Pantheon just to get that early Ninja Tabai, then I can start trading with it once I've got some points in my W. Versing Phil AD comps, your core items are going to be Trinity Force and Ninja Tabai. Trinity Force is just too much of a power spike to pass up versing a Phil AD team, and it's best to get it early with your Ninja Tabai. Mid to late game, if you want more damage and trying to snowball, a Blade of the Ruined King is a really good option. Generally in the top lane, people are going to be versing, uh, building a lot of health, and Blade of the Royal King deals with that quite well. Randor would be another good item to get next up, especially maybe earlier versing champions like Gangplank or Fiora, or if their AD is really fed, it's a good early item. Guardian Angel is really good if you want to continue your snowball, you're going to be squishy and you need an extra life, but you get the extra damage, so you're going to be high, probably trying to burst their, their backline with this build. Uh, Frozen Heart isn't as core as it used to be on Aurelia since now you get 20% cooldown reduction from Trinity Force. But it's a really good item if you're versing heavy att attack speed reliant champions like Trindomere and if they have an ADC and maybe a Master Yi jungle. It also gives you a large mana pool to keep up with your queuing and split pushing if you need to. Sterex Gauge is an all round good item. Uh, you generally want to build it after you've built a bit of health. Uh, even with your Triforce alone it works really well since uh, it increases your base AD which increases your Spellblade procs. And the last item for this build would be Thornmail. Thornmail is useful if they have several auto attack reliant champions like Trinomir again, or in an ADC of course, and then maybe an attack speed reliant jungler. I would only get it last as the passive scales off your bonus armor. So getting it first is generally pointless. Versing heavy AP comps, your core items are generally always going to be Trinity Force and Mercury Treads. Trinity Force is just your obvious core item, and it gives you the biggest power spike in the game. To continue a snowball, you could then go for a more of Malmortius, which gives a really good passive with the lifesteal and also good magic resist and cooldown. If you needed to get a bit more tankier, you could build a Spirit Visage. It's a really good item on Aurelia, it gives 10% cooldown reduction, some HP regen, and it also gives the extra healing on your W and general basic attacks. Next up, Adaptive Helm is a really good item versus Cassiopeia, Rise, or even Swain with his ultimate, as they all have spammy abilities or abilities that are going to stun or hurt you over and over again. It's a very situational item, but it could be really handy depending on what champions they have. Death Dance. I look at Death Dance as the new Yomu's Ghostblade if you want to snowball, but versing AP champions is really good because generally AP champions will have a bit more burst to them. So taking the 30% less damage from their burst and then having the rest is bleed gives you a chance to return the damage and heal some damage back up at the same time. Mercurial Shimitar is a really good item. I'd get QSS depending on what champions they have. If they have a lot of stuns, the worst thing you can do is dive their backline or dive anyone for that matter and then get stun locked. You don't want to do that, so if you if they use some stuns on you, then you can QSS it and then continue your rampage. Last of all, late game, if they have some tankier AP champions like Swain or Sejuani or anyone like that, even a Mumu, you might consider wanting to get a Blade of the Ruined King as a last item, 
if you've built if you've built a more tankier AP so or magic resist build, it's good to shred their HP at the end of the game if they are building tanky, and it's a generally a good last item overall. And finally, a standard build versus an equal amount of AP and AD champions, your core items would generally be Trinity Force always and Ninja Tabi. You can go Mercury Treads depending on uh, how much CC they have, but generally I feel like if I'm versing an AD top laner and they have a good ADC, like a late game ADC, it's better to get Ninja Tabi. Second of all, I like to go for these items. Uh, Sterox Gauge, Spirit Visage, Randuins are all very good. Especially on a Rallyer where you need to survive if you're going to go for a team fight build. The order in which you build these items is generally depending on how the game's going. Like if you're snowballing your lane, you might go for a Bork. Uh, if their ADC is really fed or if you lost lane, you might consider going for a Randuins. Uh, if, their AP, if their mid laner AP carry is, uh, is, is fed, you might consider going for a Spirit Visage next. Or if you're versing an AP champion top, uh, Spirit Visage is a really good next buy. To continue a snowball or if you need another life, Garden Angel is always a good option. It gives you the full A, uh, 40 AD and then it gives you the extra life. Uh, finally, you might consider going uh, more of Malmortius as a last item, depending on if, if they have more AP or AD champions, whichever resistances you really need. Aside from all the builds just mentioned, there are some situational items that can help you during specific matchups. Wit's End and Abyssal Mask can be pretty troll if you're versing a Swain for example, which I mentioned earlier. Getting the Wit's End gives you the extra magic resistance and taking away their magic resist uh, on hit. Uh, with the Abyssal Mask, champions around you take 10% additional magic damage. So that, that, that also stacks with the Wit's End and also your ultimate is magic damage and also your E. So it, it's a really specific item build that you'd take versing only one or two different matchups. Next up is Static Shiv and Phantom Dancer. It's not really optimal, I guess, but it's really fun to play if you've, if you've ever built a, a Sheen or a Triforce into a, a Shiv. Um, you're looking at amazing burst as your Q does proc the Static Shiv passive. Phantom Dancer is just a good dual item in general. Uh, it's not really built on a Rallyer, but generally if I'm playing mid a Rallyer uh, and I want a bit more burst and dual potential, I will go for Phantom Dancer. Uh, I don't re recommend trying it ranked, but it can be quite effective. Uh, Death's Dance is... It's good if you're snowballing, not so much versing AP champions as I mentioned before. Well, not only that, if you're snowballing, I would recommend going for a Death's Dance over, say, a Yomu's Ghost, Ghost Blade. As taking the 70% of the full burst damage of a champion is so beneficial and can really help your survivability. Next up is Titanic Hydra, which can be a very good second damage item after Trinity Force. If you need to build lots of health to negate a lot of damage from AP and AD damage. Generally if you're going for a tanky team fight build after that, tr Titanic Hydra can be very good if you're going to go Trin Trinity Force into Titanic Hydra and then build full resistance and health after that. Your late game damage will still be really good with the Titanic uh, passive because it scales off max health and you can look at some really good damage outputs. Lastly Adaptive Helm. Again, as I mentioned earlier in the AP section, it's really good versing matchups with spammy abilities. I would only pick this versing champions like Ryze, Cassiopeia, or Swain. Combos. So your first combo is generally a level 2 combo, which is when you go in for a Q reset. E stun them, auto attack, auto attack, as much as you can until you need to Q to close the gap and then auto attack again. I'll show this again in slow motion as you can see we're both level 2. I go for a Q reset on the minion and then E stun the Zin Zhao and then get an auto off and then another auto attack off. And then once the gap needs closing I Q to him and then auto attack and then auto attack him again. And at that time I can't get another auto attack so I back off. The second combo to mention will be about a level 4 combo. Again you go in for a Q reset, E, activate your W, auto attack them until you need to close the gap. Q to close the gap and then auto attack to get away from you. See here in slow motion we go for the Q reset, get the E off, activate the W, auto attack him as much as we can, Q to close the gap and then auto attack him until we can't auto attack him anymore. The next combo is a level 6 combo, you can Q reset to a minion if you know you're about to level up to level 6 and then get the stun off, activate your W, auto attack R, auto attack R and then use the Q to finish them off as an execute or close the gap in slow motion. 
we Q reset to the minion, get the level up, get our ultimate, use our ultimate and E, and then activate W for the auto attacks, and then Q for a gap close and finish it off with an auto attack R. And the last combo to show is if you need to close the gap and you've got no prepped minions, you can R, R the minions, then Q to get the Q reset onto the back minion, activate your E for the stun on the champion, activate your W, start auto attacking and using your R combination. And then you use Q to close the gap if you need to or as an execution. Here in slow motion you can see we use the R to damage the back minions to prep them for a Q reset. We use our Q reset, get the E off to stun the champion, use W for the extra damage, auto attack R, auto attack R and then Q to get the execute and finish off with an R auto attack. Matchups. So the first matchup to talk about is Olaf. Every Aurelia player will know that Olaf is a pain in the ass and he really up trades you early with his axes and his true damage on his E. The first two levels he's going to try and push you away from the minions with his axe, pick up his axes and keep poking damage at you. So all you have to do is just let him push you in, let the wave bound, rebound off your tower and then go to reset back in the middle. Once you hit level 3 to 4 you can actually start out trading him. As you can see in this clip the Olaf is coming after me as he's just hit level 4. I do have ignite in this video and I just fight him in my minions with the stun then into my W and Q. Unfortunately he flashes away and then I catch up to him with my flash and get the last auto attack on for the kill. So the next matchup here is Galio. Galio is a new champion that's started arising in the top lane and causes a lot of problems for Aurelia. As you can see in this video when he uses his dash you need to keep the minions prepped at all times. Keep several different minions prepped if you can. Because if you dodge his E damage, his dash, he can't get off his taunt and give you a full rotation of his Q. So you dodge a lot of damage if you can just dodge his dash when he comes into you. And then dash back to him to deal some damage. Because he won't have his E to get all that CC and also the Courage of Colossus effect on you. The last matchup here is Jax. Jax is a pain in the ass and outscales Aurelia. Although in the early levels you can beat him, but if he gets a good counter strike off he can beat you, you just have to remember to not be too scared. As you'll see in this clip I go for a cheeky auto attack under his tower, he counter strikes, gets that damage off me, goes to auto attack and walk away, but I get my stun off and then ultimate ignite and then full combo him. As you can see in this clip I don't even have a sheen, I just have a ruby crystal. I have no damage, I've just got my combo that's really effective against this Jax and can easily kill him. If he makes the mistake first, don't hesitate, you can go in and win the trade. Garen. Garen's a pain in the ass, levels 1 and 2, they're really bad for you. Just sit and stun him if he tries to Q you. If he does try to Q and silence you in your minions, you can just E him just for the stun and then sit on your minions. Doran's Blade and Cloth Armor early does help your level 4 and 5, but early Ninja Tabby works great with the Doran's Blade. After level 3, before he cues you, press E for the stun and activate W before he hits, so you can get the benefits from Hutton style while silenced. You can do this to win this trade at level 4 onwards. Also, with this matchup, don't forget to use your Corrupting Potion with your W before he silences you, as this will greatly in increase your damage to him while he's spinning, and also reduce the damage done to you with your healing. Renekton after level 3, don't be scared to level 4 combo. Just be careful of his fury bar so he can't get a full combo back on you. Ninja Tabai are great for negating damage from his W and his full combo. At level 9, when your W is maxed, you do beat him, provided you're relatively even in gold. So the aim is to not feed this lane. Keep wards up as their jungler is most likely aware that you outscale Renekton. Therefore might try and get him ahead early, so watch out for that in every matchup. Riven. If she tries to Q push you level 1 and uses at least one Q to close the gap to you, just stun her in your minions and auto attack. She won't be able to outtrade you with a full wave of minions attacking her. Try to prep minions to Q reset on. If you can dodge her third Q, which is when she front flips and stuns you, she loses time to do free damage to you and you can retaliate the damage. Three points in your E in this matchup can be beneficial. If she tries to combo you, you can get a longer stun, which gives you more time to deal free damage and retaliate the damage effectively. Look at her shield, it is a very big shield, but it only lasts 1.5 seconds. So if you're going to retaliate the damage or Q onto her, 
Try to wait out the 1.5 seconds before going on her. Fiora. Try to E her at unexpected times. She will try to counter with her E repost. And it is a mind game. It's all a mind game early levels in this matchup. Because if, if she misses her E and you get your E, then you generally win the trade. If you get a bad vital, walk away from her out of vision to get a new one. If you, if you have one that's in front of you, she can easily hit it. So just walk away and try to get one that is positioned behind you. You can always go for an early Ninja Tabai and Doran's Blade to out trade her early. Although that is not necessary if you're out farming her and out trading her. Depending where the vital is, you can actually hug the wall, the inner wall and top lane to make it hard for her to hit it. When she goes in and misses, you can return the damage and maybe get off an E if it's unexpected. Mid and late game. So during the mid and late game, let's assume you won lane. You really have to work out if you're going to split push or if you're going to go into a team fight build. Generally if I win lane personally, I like to go into an early split push build that might include Blade of the Rune King or Titanic Hydra. If you go into a split push build, you really need to know how to split push, when to split push and have to you have to synergize with your team. You have to rely on your team to accept that you're split pushing and not do anything stupid. If you don't think you can split push in a specific game, you can always go the easy build which is a more tanky team fight orientated build and just team fight with your team. This is a lot more safer than going for a split push build as if you split push you could potentially get caught out and then make it a, a 5v4 and giving your team the disadvantage. Do your research on split pushing and team fighting with Aurelia and just see or in, even in general not just Aurelia and just see where you think you fit in what you think uh, is the best option. Every game is different. Every laning phase ends differently. Assuming you lose, you may want to go for a tanky teamfight orientated build using items like um, Randuin's and Spirit Visage and get some cooldown just so you can keep stunning people and queuing people in teamfights. But you then have to work out the basic threats in their team. In a teamfight, working out if their ADC is going to be really strong. Do you want to jump on their ADC? Do you want to peel for your ADC? Or do you want to jump on their, their mid champion and try and kill them? To try and take away some of the bursts from their team. There's lots of options in team fights as Aurelia. You just have to pick the specific one. Alright guys, so this sums up this Aurelia guide. I tried to include as much information as possible, so I hope I was able to teach you something. If I've missed anything or if I'm incorrect or anything, which I don't think I am, uh, let me know in the comments and if I need to add anything, um, any specific information, I can always change it and uh, re-upload if I need to, if anything is really badly wrong. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments what you thought. Give it a like and hopefully you can subscribe because i got heaps more coming. So that's it for now and I'll be sure to see you guys in my next video. Yeah.